Well, hello all and welcome to Monday. Who am I to welcome you to a day? I'm Kevin, that's who I am. I'll welcome you to whatever I like. And today I'm going to welcome you to Monday, because we all read calendrically, and that's a word. Anyway, welcome from my home. Not Becca's home, nobody else's home, not my father's home no more. My home, yes. We have candles a-blazing, even though it's only 9am. And... This is one of those episodes where I talk into a handheld, and you guys listen, thankfully. And um, But as we said, we do a couple of weeks of Patreons, so then me doing a weird handheld one. We said we wouldn't do these ones every week, because it's basically a ramble, what the Patreons get. But I do try and make these paranormal, because that's the point of this show, and as it dies out. Uh, by the way, you can't get me anymore on contact at talkaboutghosts.com. You can get me still at talkaboutghosts at hotmail.com, because that's still active, or the new contact at wnta.com. That's right, contact at winter.com, for winter is coming. I hate that already. Um, but I love it at the same time. So, what can you do? Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Because we do like to still maintain, you know, Although I'm dropping ghosts, it doesn't mean Kev's not a fan of the paranormal anymore. No, I still have another ghost show, and I love the paranormal. And this is still a ghost show, at least until the 31st of October. So, what during, what I was going to talk about is during the move of... Because so, me and Beck are doing this thing where we're very amicably, once a week, I'm going over, getting some stuff, coming over here, dropping her off, then we'll go for breakfast, and then, you know, making sure we're staying friends and stuff like that. Um, Apart from yesterday, when I was very late, we had to rearrange, due to other Patreon-related business, which I shan't go into, but anyway. um, But during the move, uh, last week it was books, or books, or however it's pronounced, and I don't know. But, I'm pretty sure it's book, isn't it, as in passing the book. Like, the Americans say book as in a dollar, don't they? And that's how we say book in England. And we say book in Liverpool. And kook, kook book. Yeah, that's right. So, anyway, it was time to get the books last week. Or books, if you will. And um, I didn't realise how many occult books I've got. And I'm talking, I forgot the shit I've bought. In terms of, oh my God. Like, I thought I'd need... I thought I wouldn't need a bookcase. I just thought that the one I had in Becker's was full of like 10 books. And then the rest was like maybe music books and dead and brown books and horoscopes and tarot cards and stuff. People are thinking, yeah, tarot cards are kind of still in the same vein of the, of the occult. But anyway, um, no, my God, I had loads, loads. And I bought this tiny, tiny attempt of a bookshelf. Oh my god! And now it's about three three tiers high, as in like without any of the shelves, as in like there's maybe fifty books on something that should support five. So I'm all right with that. It kind of looks cool, to be fair. It looks like it does look like a, like I'm a mad wizard, but I've had to turn the spines around on some of them, like especially. Um, let me just I'll go over and read verbatim. You may recall when I bought it. Yeah, but I had to turn the spine around definitely on is it? the book of black magic and ceremonial magic. That had to be turned around, just in case, you know, my elderly auntie wants to, she's not elderly, but in case my auntie wants to pay me a visit, I thought it best to, I only said elderly auntie, el, an, I only said elderly auntie, because she's the eldest member of the family now. Um, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to talk to you about, sorry. So when I was moving all the books, books, box, I'm going to stop calling them backs. And then when people say, what the fuck's a back? I'll say, because when I say book, people say, you mean book. When I say book, people say, you listen to him, he means book. So I'm going to say back. So when I was moving all the backs, um, I came across, something fell out. Right? And I, I thought, what the hell is that? 
And when I looked at it, I remembered, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to forget. There's some pieces in this I'm definitely going to get framed because they are awesome. Um, and it's from the 70s. And that's not why to get framed. <laughs> and it's from the 70s. Basically, uh, the ancient and mystical order of the Rosicrucius. So, yes, if you remember, you may well remember, many, many years ago, I managed to find in a second-hand bookstore somebody's acceptance pack to the Rosicrucians. <laughs> As you do. And to quote from this letter, this is, uh, it's a bot. This is the thing that I might get framed, actually. So it says, respected member. At the top, there's this, the logo of the Rosicrucian Order, or also known as the Ancient Mystical Order of Rosé Crucis throughout the world. This is from San Jose, California. And it says, respected member. I bought this in Liverpool. Your application for membership into the Rosicrucian Order, AMORC, has been received by the Membership com Committee. We are most pleased to inform you that your petition has been found acceptable. Your new membership credential in indicating your permanent key number will be found in this introductory material enclosed within the letter. The latter. This introductory material is a part of the registration process alone. Interesting. In order that additional materials may be sent to you, we will need one quarter's or one month's advance due payment. Pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme. Or is it a cult? I need to look more into it. But we all know the, the order of the, the Holy Cross is, was Rosicrucians. That's what I thought it was anyway. But uh, this this is like the, the, the weird part. Well, not the weird part. I don't know whether the Rosicrucians have always been weird. You know, like, as in... I'm going to say weird. I mean that in the politest way. As in, like, like I'm a Catholic. We're weird. Do you know what I mean? We... we if you're an all-in Catholic, um, you genuinely believe... I don't. But, you know, you suspend your disbelief, shall we say. And you believe that when the priest puts his hand, hands over the wine and the rice paper circles in a little golden dish that they become the body and f uh, blood of Christ or the flesh and blood of Christ and then we all go up and have a nibble on a sip yeah and I'm calling these weird but the, like well, it's not that in the in the, the Catholic mass that's not considered symbolic you know, we're actually meant to believe that that took place. And um, here's me calling these guys weirdos. But my point is, I don't get a bill through the month, through the door every month to be a Catholic. Anyway, it's necessary for us to receive the first dues payments before we can continue your, before we can establish your active membership program according to your wishes on a quarterly or monthly basis. Wow. If this dues payment has already been forwarded separately from your application, no additional remittance is necessary. It's a bill, basically. It's not a welcome, either. The officers and staff of the Rosicrucian Order extend our thoughts and hands in a welcoming gesture of fellowship. Wow. That isn't, that's like writing a letter to someone that says, I'm right now stood here waving at you back and forth, left and right, with my right hand in the air. I hope when you read this, you do the same. He says, with best wishes for peace, profound, we are sincerely and fraternally the Rosicrucian Order. Amok. And then there's a the name of Carol Ann Palmer, maybe, in re the registration department. And then underneath, you know, like where you've got like your footer, your foot, where it would say things like, um, Jeff is a registered company. It says, a worldwide non-sectarian fraternity devoted to the investigation and study of the higher principles of life as found expressed in man and nature. Mm, but that's the thing that I might get framed because it looks like I've been accepted in the 70s to the Rosicrucian group. Then there's a very well, like this, I might get this framed too because this is like never been creased it's perfectly intact. 
And it, honestly, it looks like it's just come off a printer. But it's as old as that. Hail Neophyte, it says. And there's all weird symbolism all around it. Um, as such, I greet you because your petition for membership has been examined and passed for the committee. You have been found qualified to receive the first instructions preparatory preparatory to your particip participation in the work of our organisation. First, read the private mandamus in this, in this folio. I thought I was going to say poor folio. You will also find within the folio, in the section indicated credentials, your membership card containing your key number. I d didn't have that in. I was devastated. The Rosicrucian teaching teachings are prepared in the form of monographs. After each, after receipt of the present one, you will be sent four each month for the period of your active membership. As an active member, that means paying member, your lessons will be processed with all the other members in your area. Thus, depending on when you've been accepted and when your area monographs are processed, it could be from one to four weeks before you receive your first packet of four monographs. I want you to feel that personal, intimate contact now being established is the first step in the demonstration of the fellowship of the real brotherhood, and I extend to you my hand in true fellowship. With all good wishes for peace profound, I am, sincerely and fraternally, your brother. And then, a really... Is it Ralph M. Lewis? I think, Ralph M. Lewis. And then it says... Imperator. He's also got a symbol after his name as well. Should we see? Oh, yes, yeah, should we see? Should we have a quick Google if Ralph, um, if I put in Ralph M. Lewis? Amork. It'll tell me exactly when this, what I think is a, set, a piece of paper from the 70s. It'll tell me when it's from. Let's have a look. Ralph. M. Lewis, thank you very much. What the fuck? Whoa, hold on. Yeah, he's on Wikipedia. Ralph Maxwell Lewis died in 1987. So this is possibly from the 70s. It looks immaculate. It says, Ralph Maxwell Lewis was an American mystic, son of Harvey Spencer Lewis, and the Imperator of the Rosicrucian Order. Um, he is the author of a number of books regarding mysticism. Ralph Maxwell Lewis was born in New York City. His father, Harvey Spencer Lewis, who was the first Imperator of Amork da, 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 for, the North and South America, for North and South America, was born in New Jersey and was of Gallic, Gaelic origin, even being descended from Sir Robert Lewis, former American, American colonizers. Um, it said, the use of the word imperator is a norm for AMOC students and can be likened to the word commander. It is used to denote the current head or leader of the AMOC mystical organization. Well, I'm just seeing if there's anything where, where we're going to go, ah, what, what is this thing you've got? He apparently founded the Grand Lodge of Brazil in the summer of 1956. There you go. Personal life. Here we go. Oh. On March 28th, he married Gladys. That's interesting. Well, I guess it was um, an important thing for him. Marriage often is. But yeah, how very weird. So when we look deeper into this thing, when I say we, I mean I. It comes with two books, right? <clears throat> one is called The Master Monograph. And one is called The Mastery of Life, right? <clears throat> Pardon my throat. Pardon my throat. Pardon my throat. But basically, um, within these books, and cl clearly now I know that these are from like the 70s or early 80s at the very latest. I'm now much more intrigued. But it says, yeah, listen to this. It says, one of the pages says, the mysterious world within you, things you ought to know about yourself. And there's pictures, like photographs accompanying these. Like very 80s, early 80s, late 70s photographs. One is of a male man giving some mail to a lady. And it says, The touch of letters and objects can immediately convey impressions of the sender and past events. So that's basically psychometry. 
It says the human consciousness can be instant, instant, uh, instantaneously extended out of the body to remote places and events. So that's etheric projection or astral projection. It says mental impressions and sight and sound sensations can be communicated at a distance without physical means. Mm. So that could be like when, you know, when one twin feels some, I don't know, you know what I mean? Another is a picture of a man talking to another man, but one man has like the ready breck glow around him. This is all in black and white. It says humans radiate a magnetic energy revealing their true personality. Those in their presence can sense it at once. And underneath that is a man and a woman both facing forward, and a man has a beam coming from his forehead. His pineal gland if you will it says changing thoughts into things we can mentally create using you sorry changing thoughts into things full stop we can mentally create useful realities from our ideas so this is kind of like the secret before the secret i guess the whole cosmic order and malarkey which i don't believe in but this seems i don't know don't know it seems very interesting to be honest so th that's one book that's the mystery of life and then what they say they do as i read out earlier they send you through these things called monographs um which are lessons and experiments uh, like within the psychic or cosmic mental whatever realm and i think they're done by different members of the society so there's different experiments to do. Uh, one is thought transference, and it talks you through doing it with a person. It says, try this experiment. Next time you're seated in a room. Oh, it doesn't tell you you need another person. The next time you're sat in a room with another person who is reading or not seeing you, begin to concentrate upon them without letting them see you looking directly at them. Fix the whole of your attention upon them. Dismiss all other thoughts from your mind except the person and the person will look up in your direction. If you're successful, after a minute or two, after a minute or so, the individual will direct his attention towards you. Hmm. The next experiment in mental creation, this is, it says the term mental creation is a very common one. It's not. In fact, everything we do, consciously or unconsciously, has its origin in our minds. I agree with that. That's just life. Therefore, this is all a kind of mental creation. But to create at will, to meet unusual circumstances that confront us, or to have workable solutions for problems, is not easily achieved. Some people seem to just adjust easily. That is, they have a ready flow of new ideas to create what they need. However, this faculty of mentally creating, of organising thought, of objectifying it, of bringing conditions about to fit the mental picture we have, is systematically developed a process rather than a haphazard one. It is a metaphysical process using co cosmic or natural laws. It is one of the major principles of the usefulness taught by the Rosicrucians for centuries in Europe and by the mystics of the Orient. I'm not sure you can say that anymore, but it's not me. I'm not saying it. Let's see. This one's an interesting one, and I think we should all try this. I'm going to try this, right? Not now, because I can't do two things at once. It turns out. It says, experiment. Have you ever been obliged to give serious thought to a matter or study a detailed subject when you're fatigued? Perhaps you've had a particularly strenuous day. You would much rather have rested than concentrated. But the circumstances were pressing. Would you not have liked to have had at that time a rejuvenation or refreshing of the mind, stimulating your thoughts? Let me explain, it says. We have two nervous systems. One, the central nervous system. The other, for the present to be referred to as the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic is related to the central in an intricate way. The central nervous system is like a telephone trunk line conveying messages and impulses to the faculties of sight, hearing, taste and to the motor nerves as well. The sympathetic nervous system, however, is attuned to psychic or subliminal impulses. The word psychic is used here to mean vibrations from a non-objective source. So that's the explanation before.
the experiment. Now, here we go. We've spoken about the energy that the human body can generate and radiate. The sympathetic nervous system can respond to such subtle vibrations in energy. It can receive them and transfer them to the central nervous system. This is the experiment. The next time you are fatigued and need a mental stimulus, do the following. Bring the thumb and the first two fingers of the right hand together as shown in the illustration. Basically, the illust it's you're putting your thumb in between the two tips of your first two fingers. Okay. Um, take a deep breath and gently press the fingers into the hollow at the back of the neck against the back of the skull. So you know like that, well, what he's just said, the hollow. Um, this area is the, I can't pronounce that, O-C-C-I-P-I-T-I-A-L, occipital region of the brain. Press gently but firmly and at the same time exhale slowly. Energy will pass from the fingertips to the sympathetic nervous system, thence, that's a word, to the central nervous system, and finally to the octopical region of the brain. Do this at least three times, and after a few seconds, you will feel calm, relaxed, mentally refreshed, nothing more. This experiment is based on cosmic and natural principles. There is nothing supernatural or fantastic about it. These are principles which are included in the teachings you're about to receive. How is such energy generated? Why do you use three fingers? How is the energy transformed and conveyed from one nervous system to another? All of this information, we repeat, is a part of the well-established and, we may say, private, exclusive teachings of the Rosicrucian Order. Private until Kev released it for free on a podcast. Try these experiments during the ensuing week. Our next mailing will introduce the official, carefully graded and fascinating teachings. There is a new world to be revealed to you. It is not enough to have examples of the powers of self which we have shown you. Though briefly, it is also necessary that you comprehend them and apply them effectively. May peace profound abide within you. Yours fraternally, fraternally even, because, you know, brotherhood, sexist, your class master. Interesting though. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it a world of interests? And then it says you receive these booklets apparently in groups of two or four, depending upon which part of the world you live in. They should be treated as though you receive one a week. However, take just one, graph, one monograph for each weekly study period and hold the others for the succeeding study nights. In those months where there are five study nights, use the fifth night as a period for review. Okay. This is a very interesting thing. It says, a brief history. It's essential that you know something of the history of this worldwide organization, of which you are now a member, by the way. The history is fascinating, if they say so themselves, for its origin may be traced back many centuries. Traditionally, the roots of what is now of the Rosicrucian order, Amok, began in ancient Egypt. Consequently, we are sending a little brochure giving the essential features of this history. It is requested that you read it at your earliest convenience. It is not necessary that you take your regular study period for this purpose, however. Unlike this monograph, which is strictly private, hello, 4,000 odd listeners per week, um, which is private, where are we? You may put the history brochure in your pocket, or purse, or read any time, or any place. You can even loan it out to a friend, but you can't do it with this. You can read it on a podcast 30 years later, though. We may take this opportunity to suggest to you to keep a notebook for study purposes. Write down the thoughts that you want to implant deeper in memory. If you get into the habit of writing down questions as they come to you, you will often find that answers come more easily. Also, from time to time, you will be asked to enter laws, principles, or experiences in this notebook. This notebook will be a very useful tool. And then they leave with a quote from Albert Einstein, who wasn't a Rosicrucian. The fairest thing we can experience is the mysterious. I'm, I'm putting teas where they don't exist. The fairest thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the fundamental fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle of true science. He who knows it not and can no longer wonder, no longer feel amazement, 
is as good as dead. Yeah, I like that as a quote. That's very good. I'm going to keep that as a quote. But yeah, it does come with the, this booklet, The Mystery of Life, which I am free to lend to anyone I wish, um, according, or borrow, or however you say it. And uh, I won't get in trouble for it, according to them. And the reason why you can lend it to anyone is because it says, how to join. It says, carefully fill out the blank application form, answer all the questions, sign it accur accurately, Refer the included. Da, 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 da. You'll hear from the secretary to see if you've been rejected for any reason. If if so, your registration fee will be returned to you with a frank explanation. It doesn't tell you how much because I clearly didn't get that part of the instruction. It says, "Become united with the enlightened minds everywhere. Truth knows no barriers." Amok. Not a religion is one of the oldest authentic organizations in the world, perpetuating the ancient truths for the advancement of mankind. It's basically, you know what it is? It sounds like from a very, very, very brief overview. You know the way the word occult means hidden? Um, and there has been a long kind of conspiracy theory that um, the upper powers don't want you to know the hidden, as in the occult. That's why they try and demonize it. Because, that, for example, that experiment I told you just then, if that works, and let me know if it does, but if that does work, then there's something to this. And if what they're saying is, like, we'll teach you this, then I'd probably pay it, I'll be honest. It does say, I've missed this, at the front it says, these men were Rosicrucians. It says, what is a Rosicrucian? One who has learned or is learning a philosophy of life, a path to confident living. Today, there are thousands of men and women who enjoy the influence, the comfort, the personal power, the unique science of living as taught by the Rosicrucians. Their lives reflect the personal accomplishments and understanding that come with the mastery of life. Here are the following people who are also Rosicrucians. So we have Gottfried Leibniz. As we know, he makes amazing biscuits. No, German philosopher and mathematician. At one time, a secretary of the Rosicrucian body. Um, and he's the court librarian for life. Okay. Benjamin Franklin. American statesman, author and celebrated inventor. Well known for his early electro electrical experiments. Isaac Newton, well, we all know who he was. Claude Debussy, a famous French composer. Francis Bacon, the English philosopher. Credited with the emphasizing, the, sorry, with emphasizing the need of science to employ inductive reasoning and experimentation. And René Descartes, yes, the French philosopher, the man who I have tattooed on my chest with cogito ergo sum which doesn't mean what i thought it meant and was a mistake i got that for becca it's interesting isn't it um but i also got it because at the time i was also going through did little did i know a rosicrucian phase where i genuinely believed that using will you could influence i suppose it's a bit witchcrafty isn't it because it's all will it's all intent the whole idea of spells and stuff. But it wasn't Will, what was it? But basically, I'd just come across Hugh Everett III and the idea of the many worlds interpretation and the idea that every time, for example, you make a decision, the, the world branches off into two separate universes, one where you did, one where you didn't. I then extrapolated that. I'm going back 15 years now. No. 12 years, uh, 13 years, um, thinking that, okay, therefore, it's I said every time you take a measurement, you know, there's an alternate measurement. So taking a photograph is a measurement. So I decided that as my little thing, is sort of like experiment to do for myself, that if, that I could put myself in one or two worlds, I know this now sounds like Kev's lost his mind, but this was Kev 12 years ago, believe me, 
um, if Kev was losing his mind, it's been long lost. But I thought, okay, let's say tonight I wanted to... Oh, no, okay, let's say this afternoon I wanted to receive a phone call from Netflix to say they want to sign me as a writer for a horror show, for example. Right. Now, that's not going to happen because, they one, they don't have my number. But let's say they did, and I knew they did, and there was a slim chance it could happen. What I would have done back then would have really concentrated about being in the universe that that happened and then took a photo of anything. And in my mind, because I've measured something, I've split the universe, if you know what I mean, and I've remained in the universe through will that that happens. Yes, Kevin's always been a bit strange like that. And therefore, I think therefore I am, which was Descartes' Cogito. I thought meant, I think, therefore, it shall be. Which it, of course, doesn't mean that at all. What Descartes' Cogito means is it was his final assumption. You know, where therapists do this quite a lot. And I don't agree with it, this method of what they do. But they do this and then what? game you know and it's meant to calm you down but it never has with me it's always made me worse because the like it's normally you know if you're catastrophizing something they'd be like okay so what happens if jeff does steal the skateboard then what and then you're meant to go like then i don't have a skateboard yeah but then what and then you're meant to end up in their eyes in some wonderful place where you go oh yeah it's not worth worrying about but when you do it with a catastrophizer it's always death do you know what I mean? It's like, and then what? Well, then I don't have a skateboard. And then what? I'll have to walk. And then what? I'll probably be hit by a car. And they're like, and then what? And then I'm dead. They're like, oh, I wish I never played the, the and then what game with you. But, yes, there we go. So, I didn't realise this was going to, t we, we didn't even touch 14 times. We stayed on the Rosicrucian front. And that's why these are going to be very weird little episodes if we need to talk about ghosts, because we didn't talk about ghosts. We talked about something rather different. It being the Rosicrucian order and our potential hidden psychic or not so psychic, not so supernatural, or should I say supernatural gifts. But don't worry, there's not many of these episodes to go. So the next two weeks... We will have Patreon episodes, and then you'll hear me again doing one of these weird things, hopefully containing ghosts. And then we will have the final, as you know it, in its entirety, Wintag, on Halloween, not on the Monday. So I think Halloween falls on a Wednesday this year. So that Monday will be no Wintag, no Patreon. There will be just the final Wintag ever, of all time, featuring Becca, a red corner, nice big lengthy episode, episode... Quite emotional, but don't worry, because Kev's going nowhere, winter is coming, the lines will stay, when I say the lines will stay open, this podcast, stay subscribed to this, and at some point in the next few months you will see a new episode appear, and that new episode will be the announcement of where to find we need to talk about, okay? And um, we might, you know what, we probably will end up, what, because that's going to be interviews, um, I've made a list as long as you're on. There's about 90 people on it. Uh, not that implies they've all accepted. They haven't, but I mean, I haven't even sent one invite out yet, but probably get Becca on as well to interview. I'll interview her, interview her, and I will be the interviewer. Anyway, I love you all. I'm going to let you all go. Have a wonderful week. I sincerely mean that. And by the way, in terms of things continuing, this is not just a plug well, it is a plug for Patreon, but what I mean is nothing changes for our Patreons, like I've said. Our Patreons still get what they've got all through the duration of Wintag. That continues. Um, so they get me rambling midweek, and then they get a paranormal podcast on a Sunday. This Sunday, as in yesterday, we talked about weird and wonderful walks you can take in Wales and the creatures you may thereby find. And did we solve the mystery of dragons? Maybe we did. That's all I'm going to say. But that will never change. The only thing that's going to happen to that patron is two things. One, it will change. The word ghosts will disappear. And they will gain extra content through video forms. So 
when I do these interviews, I will then keep the person on. And not like uh, it won't be one of those, like, and I hate it when podcasts do this, where they're like, and Steve's about to tell me the most interesting story out of the whole show, but that's for our patrons. So unless you're a patron, fuck off. It won't be like that. It'll be a full interview. And then that'll be for everyone, you know. And then I'll say to the interviewer, interview, that's, that's me. I'll say to the person I'm interviewing, are you okay to hang around for 15 minutes and we'll do um, a little bit extra for our patrons? That sort of stuff. So it won't be like a cliff edge thing. Really? And did you live or die? Join Patreon to find out more. It won't be none of that. But if you do want to become a patron and maintain some semblance of normality of Wintag, in a way, because there's going to be a Paranormal Sunday, um, then head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Yeah. In the meantime and in between time, I love you all. Uh, I really appreciate your support throughout the last six years, is it now? Seven years? Wow. Don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. And more of that. I'm not going to get all emotional now. That's going to come on the 31st. It'll be a blubberfest.com. Don't go there. God knows what that is. Anyway, I love you all. I'll speak to you all very soon. Daddy, bye. <laughs>